Indeed, for coming tonight. We know that you've had, for some of you, it's been two nights on the trot with the dance at Mallow as well. Thanks very much. What we're going to do is say just a very, a very, very quick word about the play for those of you who may be unfamiliar with it. It's set locally. By that I mean we set it around Mallow Racecourse. The topic of the play is a very simple one. It's a small guest house somewhere near Mallow Racecourse and we have a crooked bookie arrives <coughs> with a scam because he is going to switch the favourite, the French horse, the favourite in the big race for a horse that could barely stand up, let alone run. That is what the play is about. The rest of it We'll leave you to work out yourself. We know that this sort of, th I have to explain this because this was originally an English play and obviously this kind of thing would never happen in Ireland, only in England. <laughs> we do hope you very much enjoy it. Uh, there will be one interval after the second scene and just thank you again for being to the drama group and we hope you enjoy Dry Rot. Thank you. <laughs> Dear Sir, I should be most grateful if you could prepare three rooms for next Tuesday. The party will consist of my valet, Mr. Phipps, my secretary, Mr. Danby, and myself. Mr. Danby, whom I have engaged by post and who will be joining my staff on Tuesday, <coughs> will arrive first to see all arrangements. Yours faithfully, Alfred Todd. Well, that's wonderful. How many did she say, dear? Three in all. He must be very wealthy to afford a staff like that. Three is rather a lot. It's going to be murder with four people all struggling to get a shave into one bathroom in the morning. You'll have to grow a beard. Don't be ridiculous. When are they coming? Next Tuesday. Well? 
At least we've got a week to arrange things. Now I want some constructive ideas as to how we are going to arrange things. It was your idea, Doris. It's up to you. I know. Let's ask Beth. Are you being serious? She must know how things work here. I suppose you're right. We'll see what she says anyway. Beth! She can't do any harm. Beth! Can't it? Well, you better keep out of the discussion, dear. You confuse her. I do. Ah, Beth, we just had a letter from some people asking if they could stay here. When are they coming? Next Tuesday. The three of them. Ah, three of them. It won't be a honeymoon, so. Hardly. <laughs> now, what rooms are they going to have? <coughs> well, there's Mr. Tog, the secretary, and Valet. Mr. Tog will have one of those rooms on the landing. He can't possibly. We use those. We're only using two of them. That's Susan's and our own. The other one's free. I use it as a dressing room. There are plenty of rooms on the other side of the house for visitors. Beth, how do the guests usually sleep here? You know, not bad. Some complain about that. I mean, where do they sleep? In those rooms are the ones at the side. Oh, those ones. There, Henry. I thought so. You just have to sacrifice a little space. I'm damned if I do. I bought this place because I wanted to live in nice, pleasant surroundings. Not a second-rate boarding house. Right, well, that's fixed. Look here, Doris. Why do they have to take our rooms? I have a horror people who come pouring through the door with packets of greasy sandwiches and buckets and spades. We happen to be in the heart of the country, dear. Best, will you see who that is? I don't care where we are. And if anyone like that dares come in here, they can go straight out again, you understand? Oh, like straight out. There, don't interrupt me, I'm talking. And as for those rooms up there, they constitute my castle. Darling. A castle which I've been dreaming of and carefully planning all my life. And you can take it from me, there'll be no dirty rascals. Won't you sit down? No, I won't sit down. <laughs> no, thank you. What's going on? Oh, good luck. I don't know you, do I? Good morning. Good morning. How do you do? No, my name is Daniel. Mine's Wagstaff. Come on, Wagstaff. Darling, this is my wife. I mean, uh, <laughs> this is my wife, Doris. Mr. Dagby. 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 Dandy, Susan, read it. You must be the person mentioned in this letter. Must I? Father, this is Mr. Danby who's arriving on Tuesday. All right, dear. Today is Tuesday. Oh, oh. Mr. Tuck didn't mean today, did he? I hope you did. Oh. May I see the letter? Yes, certainly. Oh, yes, to the postman on Saturday. He obviously thought he'd get it on Monday. Oh, I came on Monday. Oh, I better see about something. <laughs> there you have to go out of the trouble, Mr. Dunby. Digby. Digby. Denby. <laughs> Sounds like a train. Diddle dee dee, diddle dee dum, diddle dee dee. Well, if you have booked up already, I've got up. Oh, not at all, no, no. We've no one here at the moment. We'd be delighted to accommodate you. Wouldn't we, Henry? Delighted? Yes, delighted. Where's the rest of your party? They're not outside, are they? No, I came along to make sure everything was ready for Mr. Tubb. I'm his secretary, or rather will be. I haven't met him yet. Which room do you suppose he'd like? The best one, I should think. Susan, will you show Mr. Dandy the dressing room? Yes, good luck, sir. Are you sure it's all right? I gather the colonel was rather keen on using it. Oh, not at all. You never go near it, do you, Henry? No, I thought not. Go along, dear. <laughs> right, I'll lead the way. Oh, and keep in the middle of the stairs as much as possible. Why? There's a spot of dry rock along the edge. I see. Majesty. Henry. I'm surrounded by lunatics. Two rolling around upstairs, one more outside in the kitchen, and probably a couple more by now sitting outside in the doorstep. I think he's rather charming. I'm sure they'll make ideal visitors. Why do they have to take our rooms, Doris? Now listen. I don't want to hear another word about it. Very well, dear. But don't blame me when you find yourself sleeping on the sofa. No, I won't. Now, I'll ask Beth to get the rooms ready. Beth? If she's going to be let loose, I'm going to do some gardening. Very good idea. Oh, and while you're at it, you might bring in a few flowers. They'd lighten the place up a bit. Beth? You wouldn't like a small orchestra, would you? <laughs> That's a charming room, Mrs. Wagstaff. That will do splendidly. Good. Did you have a 
all me. <coughs> I did. Will you take all Colonel <coughs> Wagstaff's things out of the dressing room and put them in the room? You won't blame me, will you? Oh, stop asking silly questions and get on with it. Right. Is there anything I can do? Not at the moment, dear. Don't forget, there's still the shopping. Daddy can take me in the car. He's gardening now. Well, if there's any help, I got the car outside. Oh, I wouldn't dream of troubling you. It's no trouble at all. Splendid. <coughs> My arrival seems to have caused a minor effort. Jesus, do you ever be able to every time someone comes? Well, I'll be perfectly honest with you. If you promise not to read a word to the other guests. Secrets? Just a little one. I promise. You're the first people we've had since we bought the place. Oh, I see you. It's no joke, believe me. It's nerve wracking. I see what you're doing. That's bad. So I get up. She's not really as bad as you see. I'm relieved to hear it. She was in the place where we bought it. That was a brought down the price quite a lot. <laughs> you live here? Yes. I was going to be a second trip. But I thought it could be more useful here than putting a pin in some dreary office. You obviously haven't got a very high opinion of secretaries. No. I'm oh, sorry. I forgot. Perhaps we better go before I say anything else wrong. Let's shop down and do the popping. I mean pop down and do the shopping. Call the way, Steph! Call the way, Steph! Oh, heck! Call the way, Steph! Will you be away long? No. I was looking for you. Are you eloping? No, I was having trouble with your drawers. I beg your pardon. They were stuck. I couldn't budge them. I'm not surprised. That happens to be a key. It's all right. Now I've it done. Oh, it wasn't half a proper struggle. But there's a lock in them. Was there? Was there even now then? Clumsy fool. Oh, okay. since an impending disaster. I'm going back to the garden. I was in the middle of digging a trench. What for? Celery? No, a siege. <laughs> Have you finished upstairs yet? No. Well, do hurry on. And then, just give a clean around in here, will you? I'll have a proper bash in it, huh? Well, just a gentle tap would do. Right. No answer, boss. Well, why don't you push the publishing bin? I have, it didn't work. Not then. That didn't work either. If I kick it, I can't stand here all day. All right. Ah, how do you do, dear lady? How do you do? Alfred Tobe is my name, and this is my valet, Frederick Phipps. Really? Off your knees, Frederick. I believe my secretary will be here waiting for me. Oh, uh, Mr. Denby. That's the geezer. Easy, then. Yes, Denby is the name. I engaged him by post and arranged for him to join my little entourage here. Uh, Shut your mouth, boy. I'm afraid it's out at the moment. But won't you come in? Thanks. Ah, one of the stately homes of Owen Island. It's cotton less. Tradishly wish, as we say on the Riviera. Oh, you've been to France? No, no, the Riviera. <laughs> Bit of a wag, isn't it? Don't wag too fat, bitch. You might fall over. I always wanted to go to France. Do you speak French? Oh, well, um, you know. Do you? No, not a word, but do you? Fluidly. <laughs> My husband and I spent most of our lives in India. Oh, hot. 
Very hot, yes? Yeah. Well, if you'll excuse me, I must see the things in the kitchen. If you want anything, you just ring. Thank you. Yeah. What's the idea of all this lolly dodge? No, look, Fred. You remember what happened the last time we tried to switch rail sources? Yes. Why? Please, say nabbed us. Yes, but why? <laughs> you couldn't run fast enough. No. It's because we looked suspicious and mixed with the crooks and riffraff. They'd have said guilty before we'd even have had a trial, just by the company we kept. Is that right, is it? Is that fair? No, and they call it justice. It's getting so a crook there and show his face in daylight. Yes. And the law is cutting its own throat with this persecution. They're driving us underground. Yes. And they'll never find us. It's a hopeless situation. I see nothing but disaster for the country. Yes. Now, take me, for instance, a respectable bookie with a valet and a secretary. Who would accuse me of switching resources? Please. Please. No, no, no one. But on Saturday, we're going to do the biggest switch we've ever done. Kidnap that favourite cardinal when it's flown over from France and substitute sweet lavender who can just about stand. Here. Yeah. How would the French David have travelled to Cardinal? He's sure to wonder what's up. He's been squared. Oh. No. With Sweet Lavender running for the Cardinal, the Cardinal loses. What's the good of that? I've backed it to lose. Why? I get better odds that way. How much do we stand to me? Oh, only a cool 50,000 pounds. Only a cool 50? 50, 50,000? We shove in Sweet Lavender, it loses, and we get 50,000 pounds for our trouble. It sounds easy when you put it like that. Of course it's easy. Wait, what are we going to do with all those flipping horses? No, look, stop worrying about that. Flash Harry is seeing to all that. I've wired him to meet us up here this morning. He'll give us all the dough. Good. In the meantime, remember, we've got to look inconspicuous. I'm a respectable gentleman with a secretary. Is that why I'd be your valet instead of your runner? Valet. Valet, Fred. I keep telling you it's valet. L like in Wales. Wales? Rhonda Valley. Oh, yes. Rhonda Valley. I remember. We'll see that you do. Here, how about the secretary, Blower? We'll have to square him before he puts his foot in it. Don't be daft. He might not play. I'm going to fool him the same as the others. It's a risk, boss. Not if you don't let me down. That's why I've engaged him, to keep things classy, even if you make a mess of it all. Well, I like that. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Someone in without. Hello, Mr. Tubbs here yet? Mr. Tubbs, is he here yet? Mr. Tubbs? Mr. Tubbs? Yes, Mr. Tubbs, is he here yet? Yes, won't you come in? Yeah, thanks very much. Hello, Freddie, boy. And may I bam you? Are you referring to the master? Hi. Come in. Mr. Tove. Mr. Flash, how are you? I don't know what kind of a care for. Ah, uh, how do you do? Nice to meet you, Flash. Of course you remember my valet, Mr. Fibbs. No. Yes? Yes, I thought you would. And this is the good lady of the house, Mrs. Wexter, Mr. Flash Hall. How do you do? How do you do? Well, if you'll excuse me. Certainly. If you've got to go, you've got to go. I'm getting ready to collect your things. No hurry. Any time will suffice. Suffice, suffice. Shh. Where has he been? To night school? <laughs> we'll linger on a bit posh, see. How do you flip and do, she says? Shh. Let me blooming introduce you to the lady in the house. Listen. Any time will suffice. and fight. You'll fear some flipping stuff if you don't shut up. Well, I'm down here as a high class bookie. That's right, and I'm here belly is. All right, yes, you are. Here, first, and I'm having a secretary as well. Hey, this part of the class. So don't put your foot in it. We don't want to gather them. No. What's the news of sweet lavender? Is he up? Where? Oh, yeah. In the field. In the field? Don't sit down here, darling. Don't be so headstrong, Alfred. You're shocking the servants. I'll shock you if you don't. Do you see that clump of trees? In the middle of the trees, there's a barn. And what about the. The barn? Yeah. The barn is the barn. Inside, inside the barn, the door comes up. There are two trap doors that lead down to some sort of cellar. What is it? Some sort of cellar, but to make a lovely stable for sweet lavender. And you've got sweet lavender there now? Yes, no, it's a bug. Didn't, and you'll be able to keep an eye on it yourself. You didn't when the cardinal arrives in the country. I'll collect him from the airport, drive him down here, collect sweet lavender, take him to the course and bob's room. Clear? You're making sure sweet lavender's too weak to win. Weak? He's had so many sleeping pills every time I hang his nose back on his fat flat in his face. Right. No, you better scat for now and mind how you go. Okay, I'll keep it. Bill. Bet. <coughs> Has Bet come down yet? Uh, I fear not. Oh, dear. Well, goodbye, Harold. Goodbye, Alfred. <coughs> Why, Mr. Flash? Only 50 pins. Well, I hope that's a price. Thank <laughs> you.
Let's have that drink, boy. Who's the one serving? We'll ring the bell then. Where is it? Ah, uh, there must be one over there by the bar. Go on. This looks like like it. Did you hear anything? No, what? I didn't hear. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? The bell, it didn't work. Do I need a bell to your walk? Shall I get this one too? Yeah, I might as well. Go on. Here, steady on, will you leave the wall down? The parts I have? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Whoa, what are you after doing? I don't understand, you can't go near it. Well, you must have kicked something and walked it. I like it, it's better than that. I don't want to get my myself. Here. Here's yeah. short. Let's have a look. Can you move with your hands? No, no, it needs force. We are going to do the knob over it. I don't know. No, listen, Fred. Don't want to hand about it. I'll test the ground a bit first. Use a little diplomacy. But what? You mean no? Oh yes. <laughs> I bring the conversation on supperly, and then when I ask them, start away early. If there's a secret panel in the house, watch them and see if there's any sort of glances before the answer. William, what should we have another look? Just make sure it's a brick, not somebody heavy like us. How do you mean? He might be a his eyes must not be knowing. And he may have walked the panel just as we happened to kick the brick. It didn't see us, cover us up by making us think we walked it. You haven't been sitting in a draft, have you? Shh, shh, shh. What? What's the way you watching? No, how are we going to work it like before without him knowing? You better take it by surprise. That's it! That's it. We want we should be gutted. Act casually, right? Right. So on yeah. Been reading much lately? Half an hour. Who's it by? Yes. Oh. You missed it. I was just pretending to see. Never mind that, get out of it before someone comes in. How do you do, boss? How do you do? How do you do? An echo. How do you do? Oh! How do you do, sir? Thank God, everything, sir. Good. May I ask what you're doing here? We are guests. Alfred Hubb is my name. My God, is it? Really? Uh, oh, my wife, sir. Pleased to meet you, sir. And this is Mr. Frederick Phipps. Oh. That's right, Mr. Tom's Carver. Rhonda. Rhonda. Daddy. Yes. <laughs> Bit of a humorous the time. Really? Well, if you'll excuse me, I've been digging in the garden. I'm looking for my wife. Oh, yes, she did. Phipps. <laughs> what? Are you my wife? Uh, that must be the very charming lady we met when we arrived. Yes, I suppose it was. We were having quite a pleasant chat until duty called. Oh. Have you seen your rooms yet? No, not yet. Well, I get your things taken off. Dad! Your secretary was here earlier and showed your room. I trust you'll find it all right. Oi, I'll just have. Phipps! <laughs> Go and get the luggage out of the car. Okey dokey. Dad! Oi, Phipps! Might as well be talking to myself. It's like this here from morning till night. Dad! <clears throat> oh, do stop shouting, Henry. I can't hear myself cook. Well, where the devil's bed got to? Upstairs. And if you must shout, do it quietly. Dad! <laughs> yes, my dear. There, now. See? Have you finished the room? Well, you know, you wouldn't recognize it now. So I can imagine. <laughs> Go and give a hand there with some luggage out of the car, will you? Right. Hello there. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Let me show you to your room, Mr. Tubbs. Of course, dear lady. Oh, and keep to the centre of the stairs. There's a spot of dry rot coming up the side. Huh? Not you, the woodwork. I hope you like your room. It's a charming room, really. It's got weight wood and chipping gentlemen. Here, that'd be quite a cold girl. Chipping gentlemen refers to the furniture. <laughs> Put them upstairs with the others. Right. Hello, Daddy. Who's this the car outside? Mr. Denby's future employer. Oh, Mr. Tubb, what's he like? Large. No, I mean, how, how does he strike you? Well, I'm hoping things will look better through here as of alcohol. Have one. No, thanks. You know, I'm beginning to wonder if I'm going to enjoy my new career. I know exactly how you feel. 
Yes, Mr. Tull. Thank you, Mr. Tull. Yes, Mr. Tull. Fit seems pleased with everything. Here, look. I got a fiver. And all I did was take off his cases. Good Lord, is there any more? No. Well, I'll bring them down to my boy. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Tubb, Mr. Denby, downstairs. Oh, good show. Ah, there you are. Delighted to welcome you to my staff, young man. Thank you, sir. I trust you'll be very happy here. You, you didn't tell me you were married. Married? And who was this young lady, then? Oh, I'm not his wife. Oh, you devil's you. Mr. Tubb, I live here. This is my home. Oh, then, then you're not? No, I'm not. Oh, pardon my kind of. Delighted to meet you, Miss Wexler. How do you do? And this is Mr. Frederick Fitz. Case speech, huh? <laughs> now, what about a drink, huh? No thanks, just had one. And charge them all up to me? Ah, oh, well, perhaps just a little one. Beth, will you see to them? Okay. I'll help you, Beth, can I? Okay, Fred. <laughs> well, Danby, I hope you've come prepared to work. Bookmaking is a full time job, and you'll find plenty to do in a vast organisation like mine, dealing with large sums of money. I think I can safely say large sums, eh, Frederick? Huh? Hundreds. Thousands. <laughs> Hundreds and thousands. Oh, that's fine, Frederick. Okay? I'm a seat to the trifle. You are. No, thank you. Come to Alfred Tub, the biggest book in the business. Actually, I don't know an awful lot about it. You only want a quick frame for fiddling figures. You'll soon pick it up. Here you are. Oh, not for me, thanks. I'm her brother. Come along, then. This is a delightful mansion, Mr. Wagstaff. I'll bet you were meant to have it. I'm beginning to think so. <laughs> Tell me, is it very old? It looks quite historical. It's about 300 years, I think. Any ghosts or strange things about no, this? No. Only the maid. It's probably riddled with secret panels. That'll do. What? I mean, that'll do, Fred. No more. Well, if you excuse me, I've got to go and unpack. Don't be long. No, over to my room. Well, I need to wait. Some of the passages around here are a bit confusing. <laughs> if you want that here, Mr. Tom, just ring the bell. That one? Yes. It doesn't work. I've tried it. The bells are always going to blink around here. Better try and kick it then. We did. I mean, if we did, would anything happen? Nothing. Except perhaps a hole in the wall. <laughs> Have a, have a drink, Mr. Tom. No, Fred, walk away yourself. Go on for a chair. <laughs> Thanks ever so much. Help! What? Uh, what is hot? What for? I must be glad enough. Lost him! It's so dark in that cellar, I can't find him. He'll need a bucket of did he? Of course not. He's in there somewhere. We'll look. We'll have to look in a minute. I've got something to show you, look. Let's have a look. I found the secret panel. Where? Oh, yeah. See that notch? Watch. Look, let's go in. Okay. I'm going to use mail. Here, wait a minute. Can you hear anything? Why can't he go for his meals? There's no point in him risking being seen when we can keep supply through here. When I'm fed up, you'll take out my gun and feed him. Since Tuesday, all I've had is my spoon in Simelina. That's good to you, isn't it? My boy has that. You can't stuff it in your pocket. Look, you can't expect to make £50,000 without some hardship. You want jam in it, don't you? Yes, if I get a bit of taste. Ah, shut up. Kick it off. <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, let's come here along nicely, Fred. You'll be able to go to the ball after all. Are you going to the ball, Fred? Uh, um, uh, I am. I can dance too, Fred. Can you? Hi. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> I like you. Hi. Yeah. I like you, no. Do you, my dear? Are you walking out with anyone, now? No, I ain't. Could I take you out, Dyke? I. When? Tonight. Where? Pictures. What time? 
Seeing from all your space. Did this? I mean, is this? I will break this proper tree. You've seen it? Aye. Well, what's it about? I can't remember. Who's in it? I can't remember. Well, what was the tree, John? The man sitting beside me. Here. I thought you said you weren't walking out with anyone. Yeah, it's all right, but I didn't know who he was. Oh. <laughs> Fred! Oh, drat him. Don't forget to my Fred, will you? No. Oh, it's a nice little trap for one. Bye for now. Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your face is a min bet, my dear fatal. I beg your pardon. Good morning, Mr. Danby. Oh, good morning. Shall I tell you something? Yes, do. I found the man. Good God, where? Right here. Here? That's right. What have you done with him? Oh, nothing yet. I'm waiting till tonight. Then where are you going? The pictures. Pictures? Aye, that's where he's taking me. Oh, I see you. He's in love, Mr. Danby. Really? Who with? Me, of course. Oh, yes, of course, do with me. And I love him too. Oh, yes, that's Sandy. <laughs> Was you ever in love, Mr. Denby? Yes, as a matter of fact, yes. Fair charms are in my book, don't it? Yes, it has got a disturbing influence of me. Ooh, I think I'm going to have another turn. <laughs> well, look, while you're talking, I'll just get on with some work. I want to do too, Mr. Denby. And that's no way, dear, am I? No, not a bit. Tell me if I am, won't you? Yes, you're in my way. Well, I go and get my other duster, and we'll have our right all dust up. <coughs> Hello there. Oh, hello. Busy? Trying to be. Oh. Oh, please don't go. What? I mean, this is nothing, nothing very important. I just as soon find some excuse to forget about it. I've been called several things before, but never an excuse. Oh, I'm sorry. What I meant was I thought that I'd rather be talking to you. Please sit down. Well, just for a minute. That's better. I should be working too, you know. You never seem to stop. Now that she hasn't worn off yet. If it's so well. So, how are you liking your job? Well, it would help if I knew what it's all about. Don't you? No, I know something about bookkeeping, nothing about bookmaking. I think you're holding this post in the false pretenses. I quite agree. Mr. Tug had three days in which to find me out. He doesn't seem the least worried. You know, I have my doubts about him. Oh? He's very charming and amusing, but there's something phony about him. Especially his accent. I expect he's suddenly made a packet of the game and he wants to be accepted in wealthy circles. He surely doesn't think we're a wealthy circle. Oh yes, he's always talking as, as if your father owns the Bank of Ireland. He does? Own it. Oh, I thought you said owns the Bank of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> then I shall stop when we get to the core. Just do the dusting. Aye. By the way, he doesn't happen to be any ghost here as well as dry rot. Not the right no, I seem to hear the most extraordinary sound at night, as if someone was stumbling about. I've never heard anything. Maybe you're a heavy sleeper? Hmm, like a log. And a very charming one. Mm -hmm. What about bed? Have you heard it? Ah, uh, it's knocking. No, I go and see. No, I didn't mean. There's no one there. I meant the general sort of knocking. Where? No, where in particular? All over. That's right. At night. A sort of stumbling. He doesn't sleep well. He don't sound well. <laughs> no, I hear something now. Come in, sir. Next time I want my front teeth out, I'll let you know. Hello, Daddy. Where have you been? Shopping. Ever since that grey bowler ride, we've been dashing around trying to find enough food keeping airborne. What have you given me? Ask for more. I wonder why he always has it in his room. Perhaps he got visitors from the underworld. That would account for all those noises you hear. What noises? Mr. Danby says he can't sleep at night because of a rumbling. He shouldn't eat cheese last thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, good morning to one and all. Oh, good morning, morning, Tom. Oh, what a beautiful morning. How charming you this morning, if I may say so. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope you slept.
Ah, oh, sparkle, my dear, sparkle. Ah, time for tiffin, eh, Comrade? That's not a bad idea. Eh? Two tiffins and soda. Right. I'll help you. Okay, Fred. Many letters this morning, then, be? Yes, lads. Mostly bits for the big race tomorrow. Everyone on the print horse, the cardinal. Oh, yes, the cardinal is favourite. It's a fine horse. Magnificent horse. Will he win? Not if I can help <coughs> <coughs> How did you sleep, my dear? Very well, thanks. That's right. Poor Mr. Danby didn't talk. Oh, and what's your trouble? And I is... Oh. As if someone was stumbling about. <coughs> <coughs> Imagination. I never have the thing. Nor me. Well, it's time to go to work. What a lovely morning for gardening here, Cumberland. Yes, I think it. I would expect you want to be out to you. Quite right. Get out there now and talk over. Bet you can do my room now and do it thoroughly. Right. Danby, post these letters right away, please. They're urgent. All right. Oh, would you like a stroll, Miss Baxter? No, thanks. I've plenty of work to do in the kitchen. How about the kitchen? We'll still be here when you get back. So will the work. A ten minute walk down the epi lane is a tonic. With you. And the birds and the bees. Hey, hey. Hey. Uh, no, thank you. Another time, perhaps. All right. Give my love to all your feather friends. Can <laughs> be, are you still with us? Yes. Well, you shouldn't be. Just got a little lad. Should we have more now? Yes. Okay. Operation pattern. This should keep him going for another 12 hours. Flash! Flash! Grubs up! He must have gone. He can't have done. Flash! Perhaps he's asleep. Flash! <whistles> Flash! <whistles> what are you calling? What? Oh! Um, um, just a bottle of the garbage, I see. Ah, that is really his lefty. Here yeah, he comes along there every morning. Get back! Uh, get back to your walk, bit. Not be quick. I like for watching. We'll watch this board tanks all the same. I get crossed if you want to feed it. No, no, we've got coffee and sausages. <laughs> I mean... Get back! Get back and, fi and finish your walk, bit. There's a good girl. Um, we'll have another look at the bog later. It's flown off now, anyway. I know the one you mean. He's in it over there on the wall. <laughs> I'm starving. Where's the rope? Come on, for God's sake. And get this done quick. We can't play this game much longer. I think they're getting suspicious. Oh, Can't see yes. me. No, but they've helped during the night. Do you snore? Stop doing that. What's these? Sausages. <coughs> <coughs> What's the matter? Where's the cat McKee? For God's sake, stop it down, will you? That reminds me. I bang my head in some danger. Oh, well, we'll have a doctor and two trained nurses standing by in future. Seriously, Ed, I think she's a lever. Maybe he locks the door from the inside. Might be hard for that. See, I can do that. Let's have a look. I beg your pardon. 
Mr. Fibsiel is an authority on rot. That's right. And I was patched to the stairs. I was wondering if it had any more. And if it gets a hold, it can be nasty. Very nasty. I'm sure we haven't any more. Have we, Henry? I don't know, dear. But how can you tell? Just by tapping, see? Maybe I tap the hand at home. Oh, no, I don't bad. What? Rot. Oh, do let's make sure, Henry. Very well, dear. I should wait till we've done, and when you're on your own. Heaven knows when that'll be. I feel we shall never be pleased to ourselves again. Henry, what's what? today? Friday. That's what I thought. Seems odd. Not really, dear. Yesterday was Thursday. I seem to associate something with Friday, but uh, I can't eat what. Fish, probably. Hey, Mr. Tom. I just had to pause when you're another pile of others, bro. All right, we'll open them. Go on, Fred, you get my hand. Yes, I do. Me boy can't stand here. Go on. Well, I'm sure I don't know what it was. What, what was? Friday. Oh. I last bit. Don't start that again. <laughs> just the front door. It's like living in Patrick Street. Lovely spot. I did that for six years. Oh, but you, Monsieur, you're a footballer, 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 you are a footballer you are a that's something to go on. Get Paris on there. Go on, boss. You have a match. That'll do, Phil. <laughs> I shan't ask many more times. Who did he bless it? I didn't catch the name. He spoke rather quickly. Well, tell him to start again. OK. Encore civil player. Hello? Granted. Quiet. <laughs> again, encore, encore. Bravo, encore. <laughs> Shall a sweet pat for me or something? Look, tell him this is a hotel. <laughs> okay, it's an hotel, it's an hotel. Very natural, say a hotel. A hotel, a hotel, a hotel. Cheers, we'll all agree on that. <laughs> the last time, if you don't ask him what his name is, I should go stop staring mad. Who are you? <laughs> name? Kill none. What? I'm all if you go jack to the fords. Well, we'll just call him Shark Hole. <laughs> I don't think that's fine, right? Once and for all, who did they allow you? They can't call sure. If you don't stop shouting, I'll get thrown out. That's happening to Xavier too. He's mad. Stay for me now. For goodness sake, Henry, what's all the shouting about? Oh, sure, madame. It's just the tooth to sweet. Hi, wait, wait. This is the manager's wife. Wife of manager, female, the manager. Female manager? And she's the daughter of the film. She's just been shot there. I said it for. <laughs> hey, come away, it's my wife. Now, Henry, be patient. I'm sure he's nearly finished. I'll talk to someone. Would you like some salt and pepper? Will someone tell me who is this idiot? Idiots! Idiots! Say a fellow, you come about idiots! Don't ask him what his name is, I should go stop staring mad. Kim Manzoor. Your name? Sabe? Manzoor. Well, you would have saved a lot of time if you said that before, Mr. Manzoor. I don't think that's right, sir. Kim Manzoor, what's your name? Poor Danny Bob Pilek, Albert Pilek. Ah, that's it, Albert Pilek. Well, you might ask Mr. Polly what he wants. Oh, Henry! What? It's that man, Friday. Man Friday? The man that was coming on Friday. That was a jockey, not a Frenchman. He could be both. Ask him, Mr. Denby. Yes, sir. Pardon? Jockey? You know, jockey. Yes, sir. Come on. 
I don't think he's French at all. <laughs> Fossil's enough, Brady. That's right. Racing and all that. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's right. Here, it's fine, it's all. We're after something. Major Fibs is my name. Find the door, Fibs. Fibs. Go, so, Fibs. Fibs, Fibs. Here, have so much to be. <laughs> I think he's right, the favourite in the big race tomorrow is a... No, hold on. Great charge, isn't it? No, that's been written by Polygnac. This is Polygnac, only he prefers Polygnac. Good heavens, then he, he must be writing the cabinet. Yeah, I'm going to quit and show several cabinet of a beat the phones. I think he's just gone past the winning post. No, no, you have to be good at this. Switch the car on. Susan, go and tell Betty to show him to his room. Right, Bobby. It doesn't sound like a jockey to me. Really, Henry? What do you expect him to do? Nay? Je vous bien, ma chère. Je suis bien pour What was all that about? I think he said he was tired. I'm not surprised with all that talking. Henry! I do apologise for my husband. Pardon? My husband. Eh, mon... Marie. Mon Marie. Fortune of me? Oui. Oh, the fortune. Oui. Oh, the share. Just the desnair. <laughs> <laughs> Take this gentleman along to room number five. Five. This way. Merci, Mme Huh? He's French. <laughs> oh, he's very Mr. French. Oh, Mr. Denby, tell him to mind the dry rot on the stairs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty good, yeah. Don't rush me, I haven't finished. Yeah, dry and right, dry, dry, sick. Sick. <laughs> Do anyone know the French for rot? Yeah, compost. <laughs> compost, pinnacle, sick, compost. <laughs> No, no, no. That's not it. They are the day That's it. It's like a cease. Hit the hole, right? Fred. Fred. You there? Fred! 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 Wake up! Ah! Do you want to wake the whole house? You're supposed to be guarding the pendant. I've been lying here standing in guard for half an hour. My hands are gone tight too, Lou. Quiet. Got the grow? Yes. And you can take over the wash my flesh as he's suffered. Poor old Pellisher. He's only had half a sausage for breakfast, and that was 14 hours ago. <laughs> Come on. Is there a devil you want, then? No, I just thought he was popping old like a pistol. Come on, Flash, for God's sake. Here. I can hear you. Do one more. Henry, do come back to bed. You're imagining me. Quiet. Shh. Henry? Shh. I tell you, I have something I'm going to investigate. Do be careful. Don't worry. If I see anything, I should fire. <laughs> Who's that? Come on, move. Where are you? Bless. What happened? What have you done? Shut up. How can I possibly catch you with you shouting? Catch who? Your father thinks he heard the burglar. I tell you, I distinctly heard the burglar. All right, dear. Well, it's all over now. Do take your foot out of there and come back to bed. I'm going to find him. Very well, dear. Wait until morning and you'll have more light. It'd be too late. He'd be gone by then. And a good thing too, maybe. Now, come on. Damn it, woman, I'm stuck. <laughs> I say, what the hell is going on? A fire or something? No, Daddy thought he heard a burglar. I did hear one. <laughs> That's bad. Is there anything missing, sir? Only his foot so far. It's wet and dry rot. Good Lord, are you stuck, sir? <laughs> oh, no, dear boy. I always sleep like this. <laughs> Don't just stand there, do something. All that I'm full. Oh, oh, oh! That's no good. <laughs> you catch a dead cold if you stand there much longer. Damn it, woman, I can't move. Look, Mummy, you take one arm, I'll take the other. And Mr. Danby, you hold them round the middle. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's no good. It's with Zari. Have you got a star? <laughs> so am I. No, I mean a star for sign. 
What are you going to do, Elfridges? <laughs> I thought we might widen the hole. What are we going to do? I'll go and make some tea, shall I? Yeah, might as well get the cabs out to them. <laughs> I got a hold of something. Oh, yes, you have. Oh, there's a bar across your foot. Oh, if I could lift the bar up, you could just pull it up. Oh, no, not yet! <laughs> My hand is jammed. Push your neck down. That's nothing. No, I lift up the bar. Will you take his arm, Mrs. Weister? Are you okay, sir? Yes, enjoying every minute of it. Well, he, he. Oh, thank goodness. Now, next time, Henry, I wish you wouldn't rush into these things. Into what things? Next time you think you hear someone. Doris, if you say I imagine it once more. Should Henry, Excuse me, sir. What? What? Could you give me a hand? Quiet. I seem to have lost one. <laughs> Do get up. There's a good boy. I'm up, Tony. I'm stuck. Not again. Henry, help Mr. Denby up. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Yes, we're all here. Thank goodness. Now, let's go back to bed before we all catch pneumonia. I should get on to the police about this. Very well, dear. In the morning. Don't disturb them now. Good night. Good night. Good night. The kettle won't be a moment. Oh, hello. They will see it over. Oh, then I'd better go and turn it out. I mean, must you? Goodbye, goodbye. Must you go this moment? Huh? You know something? I'm glad your father had the burglar. Why? If he didn't, we wouldn't be standing here now. I'm not sure we ought to be. Burglar or no burglar. It's not a habit of mine to talk with strange men in the at 2 a.m. I'll take it off if you like. <laughs> no, I don't mean that I'm a stranger. We know each other for three whole days. Practically a lifetime. You can know someone as well in three days as you can in three months. It all depends on how hard you concentrate. And how long do you feel you've known me? Six months at least. Your powers of concentration must be enormous. Yeah. And don't you think, after all that concentration, you ought to go to bed and give your mind a rest? I do most of my valuable work when I'm asleep. There's nothing to distract me. I can devote all my dreams to you. I think I'd better see for that kettle. I hope you. Don't forget where the burglar. Not in the kitchen. I hope not. Right. <coughs> All clear. Right. Come on, Flash. For God's sake, get this meal done. Cat. Go on, Fred. You take over down there for a bit. I lose you, obviously. If you don't hurry up, you lose all your beauty as well. Go on. Everybody, right, next day, I want to do it. Say, please. Please. Say it nicely. I'm not talking. Please. You're talking my sandwich. Oh, please, say, clear up. Here, what's the nose of sweet lavender? I want it. He doesn't really begin to say so. But then he's still breathing. I think we're not going to move the clothes. Hey, you better give him something to pep him up. The cardinal is arriving tomorrow, and sweet lavender has to be fit enough to be switched and taken to the course as the cardinal. Well, he's not, he doesn't look around the house at the moment. Well, he's got to. When his jockey gets suspicious, oh, I forgot about the jockey. I don't think he could cope with one again. Huh? I showed him the saddle this morning. He said, nay. He said, nay. Yeah, nay. Ah, shut up. Hey, look, look, look. I think I was the nicest cup of tea I ever had. Me too. Now, don't you think you'd better say good night? Thank you, no. Good night, Mr. Danby. Good, it's beautiful. Come on. No hurry. What time is breakfast? About nine. Why? Then we've got six clear holes in which to say good night. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I think that might get a trifle monotonous. Good night, Mr. Danby. Good night, Miss Wagster. Miss Wagster? Yes? Can I call you Susan? Yes, please. Good night, Susan. Good night, John. Susan? Yes, John. Can I call you Sue? All right, Joe. Good night, Sue. Good night, Joe. <laughs> Alfred? Careful, he might call back and give her a number. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred! Alfred! Can I call you Alfred? Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up? Sweet Alfred. What? He's unconscious. Unconscious! I think he's right back. You clumsy idiot! That's 50,000 pounds you've just thrown away. Of course he is. It's us that's poor. 
I thought he looked a bit dicky when you were in there. Oh, shut up. 50,000 quid down the drain, you stand there making bloody silly noises. We'll have that to knock it. on the hostel window. We've nothing to switch it with. We'll have to knock it. No, no, that's illegal. Here, wait. We don't bother with the hostel at all. We've got the jockey, have we? <laughs> so what? All we have to do is keep panic here to dress it over and Bob drunk her. That's no good. If the cardinal don't run, then I lose all the money that I bet him. And we don't get no £50,000. The cardinal has got to run and he's got to lose. He's got to run, but he's got to lose. I've got it. We know the Frenchman panic like being put in a, a substitute jockey. Yes, that's it. Yes, but who? It doesn't matter who. So long as he can't ride very well and isn't off the course. <laughs> That's it. Let's get Theo. If I got here, the best I'll be tapping iron. Have you been heavy enough? No. Have you been off? Is that the one? Not heavy. It can ride very well. Look here, boss. You can find yourself another mug. Look, Fred, it's money for jam. You'll be doing us all a favour. I am myself a permanent injury. Look, Fred, I tell you what, I'll give you half the profits. You'll be rich. Able to afford anything. A lovely wedding. An expensive funeral. Fred! No! Fred! No! Fred! You can fret me to your blue in the face, but I'm not going to do it. Fred! No! Who's that? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, my one. He's back again this time. <laughs> Who's there? There's a gang of them, we're being besieged. Not again, Henry. Keep on the cover, dear, I'll phone the police. Hi, thanks, Steve. What's going on? We're being attacked. Take my gun and keep me covered. <laughs> <laughs> ah, police. Come and run to the bull and cow. We're being attacked from all points. <laughs> Give me that. Give me that. Perhaps something heavy. I'll tap me. Ah, David, barricade the door. Susan, get with your mother. What is it? I was right after all. About a burglar. A burglar? They were hoarded them. They were charging all over the rooms. Has everyone got something? Do you want to see if anything? No, what's going to do with this? Perhaps something heavy. Get a broom and a poker. Do you want to see if anything? No, dear. We'll get something. I'll get the tea, shall I? Tea. <laughs> Your lives are in danger now you're talking about is tea. What about a whiskey, though? Ah, good idea. Steady the nerves. Big whiskey. So then be upstairs, I'll stay here. Henry! Come in, dear. Whiskey, sir. What? No time, come on. I'll get back. Come on, Sue. There he goes. I'll see you don't go. I tell you, I saw a man. I was terrified. Whiskey quick. What did he look like? I don't know. It was too dark to see. Here, drink this. Drink what? Dad, fill it up, you fool. <laughs> see anyone? Oh, you've done a more life, Well, mother, take no, him back to bed. No, no, it's not safe to move from here. If we stay together, we may have a chance. Who's that? There is the police. Take cover. Babe, take my money, keep the cover, I'll see it. <laughs> Bob Ty. Understand the rain for him. And I'm the police. Well, I am the police, Sergeant Clive reporting. It's absurd. Shush! What's the matter with all these people? Are they dead? Certainly not. Get up then and make your statement. The house is surrounded by crooks. Well, why the devil they have sent you? I can't imagine. Shush! Don't you shush at me. I was a colonel in the army. And I was a brigadier in the FCA. Now sit down! Now look here, miss, miss. Fire! Fire! Leave me that! Leave me that! <laughs> here, I've been enough. Can I throw my hand at window? You're under arrest! For what? Be <laughs> you still? Sergeant, where's the rest of your gang? Fred, you better come in before they blow your head up. <laughs> Sergeant, I think they're being a mistake. You think that has come on me? Shush! You others go. 
go to bed. Come on, off you go. Go to bed! Come here. What are you doing? Getting ready to go to bed. And you? I'm assisting him. I'm assisting him. What are you drinking doing up at this hour? Josh, I'll deal with him. You go to your room. What? Not you! Mr. Tuck, I want a full explana explanation. This house is... Josh! What were you doing here? Sewing. At three in the morning. There are seeds. And you? Weeding. Why weren't you in bed? Well, I don't. We in bed. You're lying. Josh! Josh. What? <laughs> oh, dear, you shouted at me. Sir, you are interfering with the law. What? If you persist, I shall arrest you. It's an outrage. I shall report you. I have never been spoken to like this before. Well, make the most of it, for I haven't finished yet. Don't you point your finger at me. I've got a gun, remember? I don't care if you've got an aspirin. Anyway, it's my gun. Give it to me. I'll do no such thing. Give it to me. You're a lunatic. You're a maniac. That's what you are. A maniac. What? Probably a sex maniac. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Women are not safe with lunatics like you around. Lunatics? Get back or I'll shoot. Put it down. Get away. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down.
Commission, Sergeant Fire Reporting. Pay no attention to the previous call. Leave me just where I am. Oh, I think I'm onto something pretty big. The place is full of suspicious characters. Just run by a sex maniac. <laughs> he attacked me. Yes, me. Possibly a white slaver. No, I can't see any girls. But all the men are raving lunatics. Right, I lie low. Don't come here till you hear from me again. <coughs> Morning. Hold your ankle. Awful. Let me help you. Get your hands off me. Well, what do you want, sir? I know what you want. But you've met your match. I'm not to be trifled with. Oh, good morning. Hello, Sue. How are you? Fine. And you? I lost a little sleep somewhere. Me too. You look a special rose and twice as lovely. I must take this off. I'll do it. No, it's all right. Sue, I dreamt about you last night. <laughs> Did you? Yes, but it wasn't very satisfactory. I asked you a question, and before you could answer, I woke up. Stupid of me, wasn't it? Depends. You might have got the wrong answer. I think I'll find out right now. We're back in this dream, and I'll say to you, Susan, and you'll say, Yes, John. And I say, may I kiss you? And you will say, Yes, John. Give and sit. <laughs> now look here, Danby. I can't throw you out much as I'd like to, because you're not entirely responsible to bear for this nauseating little scene. But, but, if Mr. but if there's any more nonsense, I shan't hesitate to show you the door. But, but I... Now, you've said quite enough. If you're going to board the day after to pack that tray, I'd like some breakfast. I'll bring it up. Thank you. <laughs> ah, morning, Danby. Oh, good morning. Any mail? Yes. Splendid. Is that much? Here, laughing boy. I'm speaking to you. I don't know yet. Oh, well, the great day is here at last. Not keeping you up, am I? Yes. Yes, you were saying? Yes, I was. So it doesn't matter. Look, hop in the car and go and buy me a French phrase book. I'm taking, I'm taking a little holiday over there shortly. I just want to brush up in the lingo. Well, Holly? Yes, all right. <laughs> I've got Polly next week, next year, got all racing stuff on him. Good boy. How do you manage that? Well, I knew I'd have to get hold of him before he left, so I just offered to take him down. Hey, Fred better try these on for size. Give him a call. Okay. Fred! Ah, he look a treat in these, won't he? Oh, yes, very French. All right. Come on and try on your party dress. I'm not wearing that. It's your racing colours. I'm not wearing any dress. No, look, Fred. You'll end this up to your neck whether you like it or not. And if I say you want to do it, you're going to do it. But I've got it, please. Oh, will you? Then I'd have to tell him about a dope race horse you had stashed away. But I never doped You were with it. Nasty charge, doping horses. But I... You're an assessment to the fact. Come on, get changed. We'll pay you with them, with. Here are your ticking, man. We'll do it yourself, then. Mr. Tom! Hi, hi. Um, the piano tuner. Piano tuner? That's right. You are, aren't you? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, what's he doing here? He was sent for. Sent for? Sent for. From here? From here. Who by? Who were you sent here for, for to buy? <laughs> I'm not saying that again. Colonel Wagstaff sent for him, didn't he? Yes, um, Colonel Wagstaff. Well, this is ridiculous. Yes, isn't it? I'm afraid the strain must have been too much for him. We don't have a piano. That's a bit of luck. What? He means um, it's lucky he found out in time. He'd have pulled the place apart. He's so keen, haven't you? Yes. I'm sorry, but you'd better go back. Yes, I think he had. 
I'm sorry you've been sent all this way for nothing. No, no, that's all right. Darren! Well, I shouldn't waste any more time. We'll see you onto a bus. There are no buses. That's all right, he came on a tricycle. <laughs> Doris, where the devil's my scarf got to? Never mind about your scarf, scarf Henry. Come here. What is it? How long have we lived in this house? Six months, why? Do you remember seeing a piano? A piano? Yes, but I wish you'd show me where it is. Are you feeling all right, dear? Perfectly. These last few days have no stranger. No, dear. Now, about this piano. Yes, dear. Where is it? Where is it? Yes. Take a good look round. Can you see one? Not at the moment. It doesn't exactly hit you in the eye. Not exactly. Perhaps it's in the dining room. There's no room for it in there. But we might move the furniture about. Henry! The point I'm trying to make is, we have no piano. Would you like one? No, thank you. <coughs> so how can we have it tuned? It's a bit of a problem. It would be. <laughs> For the piano tuner. Quiet. There's not much point in his coming, so is there? Not really, dear. Well, that's a relief. I'm very glad to hear it. Now, Doris, come and lie down and stop worrying about the piano. Oh, it's all over now. And I'm very relieved to hear it. But it's a long way to come for nothing. On a tricycle. Huh? <laughs> Uh, bonjour, monsieur. Je attends la bus du hôpital pour se dire la vie. I wouldn't be one bit surprised. <laughs> Yes. No, we will have him quick before it's too late. 
Oh, clock him one. We might have to. Can we drop him a sleeping pills? Have you got any? I've got a bottle of aspirin. Don't be daft. We need about 20 to put him out. It's a full bottle. And how do you think we're going to get him to take 20 aspirins? You mean he might get suspicious? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without you, but I'd rather. Oh, thanks. We'll laugh about so. Well, where should we put him? In there, look. Look, I keep him talking. You slip round behind him and clock him one. Behind. Right. Use the rabbit punch. What's that? You know, like that. <laughs> You keep him talking, I get him behind him. What should I say? Ulo seems to please him as much as anything. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Here, I can speak French. Hello. 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 Hurry up, my hand, this off. Stop. Hurry up, open the panels. I can't stop. I kicked it off, Jim. Hey, Mr. Tom. What? Oh. <laughs> what do you want, then, Do you mind if we go out? No, I'd love you to. How's Mr. Pilot? Oh, fine, I'm sure. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, no, not really. I expect you a little nap before the big race. Yes, he's looking a bit tired now, aren't you? But cheerily, oh, we shan't be long. That's all right. Au revoir, Mr. Palmer. Bless you. Oh, au revoir. Oui, oui. Maybe it's ten years. Me too. I'll have to help you. Come on, open the kettle. Come on, my sleeping beauty. In you go. <laughs> No, oh, Fred, there's no time to lose. If you're going to take this place, you'll have to know something of the language. Whatever you've got to open my mouth, it's off. Look, stop arguing. Now, let's see what you need to say. I'm French with the one, eh? They'll know that. You want to tell them you don't speak English. Now, let's see. Some useful French phrases. Ah, here we are. What time is it? Half past ten. Shut up, I'm reading. That's all right, I've got to watch. <laughs> I have a punch up. My handlebars are twisted. Where is the post office? They are daft. I know. My grandmother has missed the train. That's daft, <coughs> sir. Yes. She's dead. <laughs> My position has been struck by lightning. Never mind, it doesn't show up. <laughs> ah, here we are. I do not understand. Speak more slowly, please. That's all you need to know. No, you try it in French, of course. I do not understand people's story. What the hell is all that about? Say it in French, it's written on the other side. Oh. Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> Je ne comprende. Pas parler plus le monde, s'il vous plaît. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to. It's French. I never learned all that. Right, look. Look, we're trying to cut it short. We just say, please, I do not understand. No, that's. See vous play, je ne comprends pas. No, come on, you say. Silver play, Jenny, come, come, come. Come again? Come from pass. Oh, yes, come from pass. No, come on, again. Silver play, Jenny, come from pass. Again, and faster this time. Silver play, Jenny, come from pass. No, no, there's something wrong somehow. <laughs> I know. It's your hands. You what? Your hands. You have to wave them about, see, like all pollinic. No, come on, try it again and use your hands this time. Silver PG <laughs> Oh no, that's too much. Tell you what, just try with one arm. Silver PG Pass. No. A bit better, but it's not right. Wait a while, I tell you. Keep your arm still and just move your hand. No, come on. Silver <laughs> PG Not bad at all. Let's come here, Lance Fred. No. Once more for look. See who played Jenny Cup on pass. Look for hands. I tell you what, don't open no more than I. Just act do. It shouldn't be difficult. No. Have you ever been on a horse? No. Well, the first thing we got to make sure is that you know how to mount. Is that the mount? Don't worry about this is staying on. Look, no problem. Once you're up there, just hang on like Grim Dick. For a grim dead, you mean? No, no, look. It's getting on, listen, Pastor. 
right? Look, let's practice on the sofa. Right? This is the head, and that's the tail. That's the head, and that's the tail. Yes. That's the tapping boss. There. Let me see, boss. There. Here, I'll go back, boss. Don't be that. <laughs> You're far around in a circle. No. The first time you see the horse is after being waiting. Waiting? I'll be riding, not fighting it. <laughs> no. You can walk up to it, you see it in the paddock. Walk up and give it a friendly pat on the quarters. And what? The quarters? Which quarter? Oh God, there's only one quarters. Don't be back, there's be four quarters. <laughs> yes. I suppose you're right. There's four quarters and there's hind quarters. Go to the hind quarters, they are about here. You walk up to it, give it a friendly pat and say hello or something like that. In French, of course. What's it all in French? Hello, I think. No, come on. You're singing for the first time. <laughs> no, no. You want to be more confident. You, you've got to let it see who's riding who. Does the door? Come on. No, come on. And more confident this time. Film up. You look the ice piece there. Yeah. No. Now we come to the tricky bit. You've got the motor. I have a pair of chairs. Don't be that. Right, sir. We have been friends. No. Listen. Right. You come around to the left of the horse, right? You put your left foot in the stirrup and you throw your right leg over. Sounds easy, you know. Well, come on, let's try it. Put your left, my hands here, right? Now, swing your right leg over. Come. Ah! Now you've got an upset it. Now you have to calm it down. Whoa, boy. Whoa. I don't see why she's talking. You know, you're praying there. Eh? There's no pause. Oh, boy. Oh, oh easy. Oh. Practice like some sugar. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, my, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, come on, let's try it again. Ready? Whoa, whoa, my, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's wrong? Come on. You're not so happy. Just stop it, boss. Climb in the air. Come on, hurry up. Ready? One, two, three, up. Ah! Egypt. Can't you up there? Can't you hang on? Hang on to what? The reins. But there ain't any. Well, can't you pretend? Here, use your braces. I haven't got any, this was yours. Oh, Come on. <laughs> right, ready? Right. One, two, three, up! Oh. Oh. Here! No, it's my pump up here. Take like it back to the sofa. No. <laughs> Dr. Reigns? Yes? When you use both hands? I can't, I've got my friends, but my hands. <laughs> well, put it away. Where's my foot? Oh, God, don't tip me something. <laughs> You let the slapping bust, I'm the slapper, right? As soon as you're in line, I pull the lever and you'll be off. Ready? Yes? Get up! Don't do things that me, boy. Sorry, I'm in a very nervous condition. Sorry, man. I got the course all right. Yeah. We had a bit of luck with him sitting in that car for panic next. I just bundled Fred in and off he went. Yeah, so now he's not off this boat, but okay. Don't worry, he won't. There's too much to lose if they catch him out. Is the race done yet? No, no, that's it. Is it all right if I stay in this room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about the girl? She's gone, thank God. This is County, so good afternoon to Here we go. Uh, Perfect. Well, That's all he knows. With 50,000 quid hanging over my head. Oh, I wish I was there. there was the yeah, there was just being a If anything goes wrong, we don't want to be the spot to win. No, no. He's probably next to the there. He was snoring as I came to him. Well, it's all over, but we got to go. I'll try up with him and try to listen. Oh, he didn't stop, Jake. Did he mention the car? Well, you know, I'm going to stay fast. Here, give me another drink, will you? Well, I'm Next part, trained by Ebridge by Brew, Brown 7. Safety, 
And here comes the favorite characters. He's looking magnificent, a beautiful chestnut. This is the first time he's talking for the neck is being when He's probably feeling a little strange. I bet he is an hour. Well, I've got my glasses on for the neck now, and he's definitely looking very determined. As if he were beautiful, he see. Oh, I wish he was. Yes, definitely no doubt about Calvin's ability. He was unbeaten in France last season, but of course he's got some stiff opposition here today. Both their second in New Year have won over the distance, and according to their trainers, they have every confidence in their ability to win here today. Oh, thank God for that. But oh, come on, we should have shown them the sweet level, though. She's in your coma. Are you know that? And whose fault is that? You're told it's the door, but you keep it immobilized, not paralyzed. If he gets to stop, he ought to be all right. Well, he hasn't, not yet. Yeah, give me another drink, will you? Well, they're coming into line for the roll call now. Oh, Blango. He's built in our street, first set, he's giving a point for the Where's my friend, Rick? Just reached the starting post. What? What? Oh, he's busy. Where? He's going to have to watch the races. Well, I've got the afternoon off. I could join him, couldn't I? You could try. He'd get a proper surprise if I sat down on sight him, wouldn't he? Throw over the house. Huh? huh? He said, of course. Ah, many fans come out of life. Adam seems to be having some public time trying to coax him back again. He's stamping around a bit and he's upset Carmel. I think he must just have kicked him slightly because Carmel has reared up and Colin F is having quite a struggle to quieten him down. Careful, Fred, careful! But he isn't succeeding and Carmel seems to be trying to throw him. Oh, God! It looks more like a rodeo. Hang on, hang on, hang on! Hang on. So he ought to be. Keep him out, shut. Oh, yes, he must be truly be. He's trying to remove him the wrong side. Oh, the side, you fool, on the side. I'm going to get in one ear. Yeah, what happened? Shake it, shake it! Oh God, shake almighty! It. We've got to know what happens. Shake it! Yeah. Take my glasses and go to the course. Okay. Get close enough to, to see, but don't get caught. Come on, will you? Hey, I want to read you one. Come on. Hey! Come on, Connor, this is no time for a nap. Come on! Tension! I want to read you one, it's not working. Look, I have to have it. No, that's it. It may be a loose file. We're tightening it. How to get in? Take it easy. But I've got to hear the race. Hurry up, shake it. Easy on, easy on. But I have to hear it. Here we are, Henry. Tea. Ah, thank you, dear. Shake it. Let me do it. Try to put it on its side. Yes. What? The kitchen clock always works better that way. Oh, don't be, don't be silly, dear. Make the colour so easy. So easy. Calm down, Mr. Tuff. Oh, thank you so much. Almost three seconds and can you play in court? Who's first? Cardinal first, yes, sir. Oh, my best friend, Ray. Cardinal was first. Almost three seconds and can you play in court? Fred, I. Oh, well, there's a problem up for the books. Did he say Cardinal? Yes, that dear little man has won. Isn't it splendid? Yes. Hand, hand, hand! It's Oh, Mr. Harold. I don't believe you met my husband, Mr. Harold Henry. Please to meet you, Mr. Henry. Please to meet you, Mr. Harold. Won't you sit down and have a cup of tea? No, I don't think he'll be delighted to behave yourself. <laughs> what happened? He won. I know he won. So how? He just hung on there and the hostage arrest. But that he ain't hard. Tea? Okay. What do you mean that he ain't hard? He, he never pulled up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Who else you know? God only knows. He jumped the reins. We'll go over the ditch down to the main road. Come on, like the Grand National. Kings? Cat. And the whole, the police must be after him. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Don't sound so worried. Cat. Smashing key. Stop, don't you? I forgot the water. I'm going to get some. You made the set there with crumbs all over you and tell me that Fred never stopped. Now, the whole comes to after. But when did you join in? What could I have done even if I'd seen him? You could have tripped him up or something, I don't know. Don't you shout at me like that. I'll shout if I want to. Just because you made a mess of things. I, I made me? Whose idea was it for that bloody house and that cupboard? And whose idea was it to lock the fridge when I put that lunatic in his place? Shh. You're in here. No. And probably landed us all in jail. Not content with starting the race off in a circus act. You have to go and win the bloody thing. Why couldn't you stay at his back? And stop when you got to the end. Who do you think you are, Anya? Lester Pickett? <laughs> I've had enough. I'm finished. I'm through. The girls are after you. I know. They're chasing over half a dozen hedges and a couple of five bar gates. <laughs> Here, Flesh. We have to pack our bags and go. Open the pen. Fred. Not going there. You'll do as you're told. I won't. Fred, if the cops now would, you'll be landed in jail. I don't mind. I might get a bit of peace. And don't talk so quick, will you? Where are you going to keep him from? God almighty, he's been enough trouble. Can't box. <laughs> no, no, not me! <laughs> 